in, everyone. Let me know if you can hear me. Let me know if you can see the slide here. Wonderful. Thanks so much for having me. Welcome. My name is Melissa Armo, and I own a company called The Stock Swoosh. And tonight is going to be a really good webinar. Is everybody awake? Is everybody listening? Is everybody here? <laughs> Tonight is going to be a lot of charts. And actually, we're going to talk about the strategy that I train. And we're going to go over the last 14 days, okay, of trades in the trading room. And we're going to go over the, the actual entries and the profits that you could have made on all of these trades in the last 14 days, okay? And we're going to go over the charts. So I'm actually going to show you how just, you know, in 14 days time, because and this is going to be a long lecture. I hope we don't go over. But if we do go over, Kathy can move everybody into my trading room if she can't stay. But I, I think it's really important for you to pay attention tonight because I'm, I'm going to show you exactly how you can make this money. And specifically in a fast time period because that's when I focus on. I focus on trading in the morning. So I run a live trading room where I close the room every morning between 10.30 and 11. Some days we're done trading by 10 o'clock, 10.15. If you're interested in more information, you can email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. You can follow me at any one of these places here on social media. YouTube is a great place to go and subscribe because I have a lot of videos there. And if you have questions or if you're interested in learning my method after tonight, you can call me here at 929-3200-GAP. What is the reason that I have a successful strategy and now a successful business where I'm teaching people how to do my strategy? It's because I'm very focused. When you're focused, you have a higher chance of success as a trader. And on top of that, you have less stress. And guess what? When you're risking money in the market, if you're less stressed, you will make better, clear decisions. The one of the reasons that people tend to lose money trading is they're under a lot of stress when they're risking money and they're in trains live, whether they're up or whether they're down, okay? Until they're out, people get very stressed out. And I tend to be so focused that I'm only doing one trade a day, one stock symbol a day, and usually only in one direction. We will look at a few longs here in the last 14 days, but for the most part, I focus on shorts. And the reason for that is because they move very quickly. And like I said, I usually like to look at the first 30 minutes of trades. It's not that you can't make money going long. You can every once in a while, I'll call along in the room. But if I'm going long in the day, then I'm not shorting or vice versa, okay? So again, it's to focus on even one direction for whatever day I'm trading it. So if you're here, what do you hope to learn from being here today? What do you want to get out of this lecture? If you want to make money just trading and working for 30 minutes, you can trade for career if you want to do it. If you want to make a lot of money with a controlled risk. Now, what do I mean by that? Today, we're going to talk about the trades and I also use stops. And, and they're real stops. I'll put a stop in and it's a hard stop. And if the trade goes over the stop, then I lose in the trade. But it's a controlled risk. Also, you might be here because you want to learn more about a strategy that you can use to trade that's successful, something that can make you fast profits, and if you have a limited time where you can be in front of the computer. Because a lot of people have other jobs, they have family, they have responsibilities, depending on their time zone they're in. I'm in Eastern time zone, I'm in Manhattan. So the market's open from 9.30 to 4. So the time period I'm trading is between 9.30 and 10. But there's a lot of people all over the world that I've taught and some of them are late at night, some are in the afternoon, and it's not convenient for the people to be in front of a computer all day. Also, I've found that actually you get really, really tired, okay, if you're sitting in front of a computer all day, and then guess what? You're not as focused, okay? You're not as focused, and that, that isn't good, okay? So can you make six figures a year in the market trading? The answer is yes, and we're going to talk about specific trades today. Now, it does depend on your risk. Does that mean if you can't risk the amount of money to make this that you should not trade at all? No, okay? If you are losing money in the market or you want to trade and you want to learn something, whatever money you can afford to risk and make using my system is, is great, okay? This could be a goal. 
So today we're going to talk about a risk of about $1,000. Some trades were a little bit less, some were a little bit more, okay? But it was about that's the range we're going to look at today for the risk. If you can't afford to take that risk, back it off, okay? The trades are the same. It doesn't matter. The difference would be the quantity to share size, which we will review today, okay? So you have to be focused. That's how you have the high accuracy rate. And, you know, again, it has to do with how your mind acts and reacts to money and risk and, 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 and the speed of the execution which you can take the trade. So I'm trading on a one minute chart. Somebody said in a webinar earlier this year, and they mentioned to me that they'd never trade on a one minute chart. And I thought to myself, gosh, you know, I only trade on one minute charts in the morning, unless for some reason I'm doing a later trade in a 15 minute. But the one minute chart has a very, very detailed way to read it and look at it that you can do it. And that's how I'm getting the high accuracy rate too. And then that's how I'm taking the size and then putting the stop to get the flush of the move of the trade, whether it's up or down, okay? So the time of the day is critical, critical to get the trades, to get the move, to get the direction right, to get the setup. And many, many days, if you wait, if you're late, if you don't get the trades at the right time, guess what? You're not gonna get it. You're not gonna get the move. 80% of the stocks that I trade have the move in the morning, in the first half an hour or hour of the day. I'll say, I'll say the first hour, but if you look at a daily bar of many of these stock symbols, which we're gonna look at here today, Many of them have 80% of the move of the bar of the day within the first one hour of the day. Now, that does not mean that I'm trading that whole hour, okay? But I'm just talking about looking at the daily chart. So what makes stocks have these big moves that you can make this kind of money, the kind of money we're talking about here, if you want to do this as a professional person over the course of a calendar year, how can you make over six figures, 100 grand a year, 200 grand a year or more, it, it's because institutions are in control in stocks and you are playing alongside that money and then it is easy to make money. You know, a lot of people struggle with trading. I can relate to that because of the fact that when I first started out, I didn't know what to do either. But it took me three years to create my own system and now that I have it, I have, I have a niche, okay? I have a niche because I'm looking for that institutional money and then I'm just playing the move that happens with it. In other words, if I'm shorting, I'm playing the big sell-off by the institutions. And if I'm going long, then I'm playing big amounts of money that are, that, were, that are coming in. They're buying the stock up in big lots, big share position quantity, where they're pushing the stock higher, okay? This is a great example, and I know I squished all the bars together, of the power of institutional money. This is WFM. For those of you that follow the market, I'm not going to go into a whole big long lecture on this, although I might do some kind of lecture on this later. This happened on Friday where it came out, the news came out that Amazon was buying Whole Foods, okay? Amazon was buying Whole Foods for $13.7 billion, and as a result, the stock had a big move up in a gap, okay? So again, very, very small here, but this is a daily chart. I'm just doing this and just want you to see here. Okay, these are candlesticks. This is a daily chart. Down here is the dates. I just want you to see the power of institutional money. So what happened, the stock price gapped up huge then overnight once the news came out and was made public. So at the previous day, it was around here, 33 something. Boom. It came out, they were buying it, or a strike price of 42 or something. The deal hasn't taken place yet. It's the second half of this year they're reporting, but anyways, the stock price jumped. So this was a big move up, okay? So this is an example of the power of institutional money that can move a stock. So the stock got bought and it moved it up, okay? Now, we're gonna go over interspersed here where I'm gonna talk about my strategy, which we didn't get to yet the last 14 days of trading and what your trading future could be like if you wanted to learn my system if you risk a thousand bucks to trade. And I'm saying on average because some trades I risk a little bit more, some were less than a thousand, okay? But you, this is with no picky targets, okay? Many of these stocks moved larger moves, you know, after I get out of them, but I like to trade early and quickly and get out very quickly. 
you could have made over eighteen thousand dollars in 14 days i had a really good run this year in 2017 i've been calling amazing trades um this in 14 days or a few days that the the uh, the room didn't do any trades and there were two losers okay so two losers in 14 days and you can still make this kind of money so i don't want to hear any negative talk or any negative nellies that you can't make money in the market you can the biggest problem when I talk to people, which I've talked to so many people since I've had the business in the last five years, is that they are all over the place in their head. And we're gonna talk about this at the end of the webinar here. It's, it's like they have no conviction. They have no conviction in anything that they do. When I take a trade, I'm like, you know, I'm like right on top of it. And any of you, if you've ever been in the room in the trading room with me on trials or open houses, you, you know how I am when I trade or, or when I, when I'm right in that period in the morning, the one minute chart. But I'm very thoughtful about what I do. Okay, I'm very focused. And I always say you can be perfect for 30 minutes, but you know, hard to be perfect from 9.30 to four. Six and a half hours is a long time to be perfect. So don't do that to yourself. Get in, get out, get in, get out. Okay, and this was no piggy targets. So the win ratio actually for the last 14 days has been 88%, that's unusually high. I'm not gonna promise you it'll be that all year. I usually run around an 80% win ratio. You know, like I said, I, you know, I've, been, I've been extremely focused. I've been like a lightning bolt lately, okay? And, and this is what you have to look forward to if you can get focused. So many people are just all over the place. And guess who makes money? You don't make money when you're all over the place, the broker does. The broker churns and burns commissions when you are in and out of trades a million times a day and that's the only person that wins. And it really can add up for you. Because if you're taking too many trades in a day and you're trading all day long, your commissions can be crazy. When I think back when I first started, the first year of my commissions were, were I think I spent 35, it was close to, it was close to 40 grand. It might've been, it might've been 35 or $37,000 I spent in commissions the very first year I ever traded, if you can believe that. I, I ended up moving to a different broker. It was a, the place was way too expensive. I, I was too green to know that at the time. Um, but having a place that has good commission rates when you trade volume is important, whether it's volume and number of trades or volume in the positions. But the only person that makes money when you trade all day long is a broker. Okay, and I find that when you trade longer and longer and longer and the more trades that you just give the money back to the market. Okay, so you, you really have to be so thoughtful about what you're doing and then you make all the money in the trade. And then it's a little bit of a commission, whatever you pay. Okay, so the total monetary risk for all the trades we're going to view today is about $1,000 a trade. You do not have to risk this much. There are some people in the room risking $100 a trade. You risk what you can afford. That's what you do, and you build it up. Let's say you don't have an account that you can afford to risk this or take some of the size of positions we're gonna review. That's okay. You build it up, and if you're making money, you will build it up, and you'll build it up very quickly. It's, you just gotta get the hang of it, okay? And you do have to kind of get the hang of it. So anyways, everything I trade, I have a reason. I, a reason I trade it, it's pre-thought out, it fits my criteria, I'm not trading on the fly, okay? This also helps me be very efficient. It helps me make money very, very quickly, okay? So what is the strategy I trade? I coined the term golden gaps. Now, there are such things as gaps out there, and we, I will explain to you what a gap is if you've never heard of it, but I've created my own system where I call them golden gaps. And the reason is, and it's a great name, it's because it's like finding gold in the market. When you find a gap that's really good, it's gonna work, okay? And they are gaps that are made by institutional money, like I showed you in the WFM, okay? So gaps are a very specialized strategy. It's, I'm looking for an event that's actually happening in the stock, kind of like I showed you with the WFM. It could be news event, it could be earnings event, it could be the overall market, something happens in the world, okay, a sector, like all the, all the grocery stores, uh, Gap Down, Cost, Target, Walmart, all of them did then Friday with the whole Whole Foods in, uh, news coming out. But I'm looking for a big move, okay? That's what I'm looking for. And if you have any questions, you can write them in the room here as I'm, as I'm talking. So here again, let's look at the WFM. Getting back to what I was saying, what created this? A huge, big reactionary move, okay? So the stock closed here the night before. You can see the bar now because I made it bigger. 
33 something gapped up to 42. So, you know, if you were inclined to day trade this, okay, did not do this one on Friday, but if you had wanted to do this on Friday, if you had bought the stock on Friday as a day trade, you would have made money. If you were along the stock prior to the, the news coming out, you also would have made a lot of money. If you were short the stock, guess what? You lost a lot of money if you were shorted overnight prior to Friday. So do you see how all these things are happening? You see how all the big moves are happening. Now, again, I like to focus on day trading. So you could have got up in the morning on Friday and used my method to rate the gap as a bullish gap. You'd be looking to go long it. You would not be looking to short this, okay? Did anyone do Whole Foods, actually? You can write it in the room if you did. Now, we're gonna go through, like I said, the last 14 days of trades. And, and, and I'm gonna move through these quickly because there's a lot of them and I wanna make sure to get through everything today, at least in, in an hour, a little bit more than that. If you wanna go back, this is being recorded, okay? So I'm putting it on YouTube, you can listen to the recording. Every day in the morning, my process is, before the open, before 9.30, I rate stocks that are gapping. First, I focus on the shorts. If I don't see anything I like or anything that rates for my criteria, then I don't trade, okay? Or if there's no gaps, and that's rare, but it might be that some days there isn't. You know, if it's slow, if it's a holiday, something like that, okay? Now, this is back, again, several weeks ago. This was Cisco. So Cisco, you can't see this here because of clock. <laughs> Excuse me, but there was, a, there was a nighttime gap here. The stock closed around 34 and then open in the morning here. Again, this is a one minute chart. This bar here depicts the volume. So the stock opened and went two, and fell and sold off here right in the open. So this is a one minute bar. So this is 60 seconds and it fell hard. So I'm not in this here. I'm waiting for the setup and everything I do, I look and pick the stock I want to play beforehand in the morning before 930. And then after the open, I'm looking for the setup, okay? So I don't trade in the post or pre-market, although some people do, I do not do that, okay? I find it's more controlled if I'm, I'm on the open, if I'm, you know, in the live day, it's a more controlled. If you get the direction right in something, though, you can make a lot of money if you're in stuff sometimes in the pre-market. I mean, you know, I don't remember where this actually ended up opening the gapping, but if, if for example, you had shorted this here, you could have made, you know, a buck before the open. I just don't play that way. But I do look at a stock, and I did like this, and I said it's a short, okay? So you could have shorted this, boom, and had the first move here. Time of the day here is between 9.30 and 10. So you could have taken it here and got out, or you could have taken it here and got out. First target, boom, right in here. This didn't have as big of a move as I thought it would, but it did have a profitable trade. Again, you don't have to take, you know, have something go a million miles to make money. You take it, you get in, first target. You don't have to be a piggy target about it. Price of the entry short was 31.30, risk was 30 cents. Share quantity, 3,000, so your risk is 900 bucks. Exit of the first target, 31, boom, 900 bucks. You could be in, you could be out. And this is what I look for every single solitary day. Then the next one was Foot Locker. This had a much, much bigger move. Really nice gap. Again, we're going back to several weeks ago. Back in May, you can't see the close up here at four because the clock is, is on top of it again, but it closed up here. Then it opened in the morning. So a gap is when a stock closes at one price and opens the next day in a different price. That's all that a gap is. But what I teach in my class is how to determine, A, that Foot Locker is the stock you should be watching, and B, that it's a short, okay? Because what you don't want to do is go long this. And that is what some traders did in here. The stock opened, rallied, went over the high, carried through a little bit, big gap down. Some people thought this was a long. In fact, some people thought this was a long even later in here too. This is the move that you want to play. This is, again, the institutional what? The institutional sell-off. That's pushing the stock down. And here you see these bars to pick the volume. So you short it, boom. So price of the entry in this one, $60.75. Again, this is not a piggy piggy move. It's went farther than this. This is the kind of money that you can make though, 2,450 bucks.
this isn't a huge quantity of the shares either because the stock was slightly big on this. But, you know, this stock can move. It went even farther than that, all right? But this is what you want to capture. You're like, um, what's the best way to describe it? Here, I'm going to describe it right now because it's pouring raining in New York right now. And I'm looking out my window and it, it, it's pouring. Sometimes, it's, it's, it's dark out right now, but sometimes it pours and rains from my window. I live very high up. And then it's sunny out. And then right afterwards is a rainbow. And if I don't reach to my camera to take the picture of the rainbow, I miss it. It's like I got to capture that. I have a few seconds or a few minutes. I got to capture that rainbow if I want to see it or look at it and look at its beauty or take a picture. I got to race to get my camera and run to the window to take it. Same thing here. You got to be on top of it. You got it. You got to get it before it goes away. Kind of like a rainbow. Okay. So the only way you're going to get this is if you A, know what direction, know what stock to play and do it. Okay. This, by the way, is enough money for plenty of people to actually make an entire week of trading, you know. Then the room was closed, okay, Memorial Day. And now we're gonna talk a little bit here about gaps some more, the concept of gaps. Any questions from anyone so far about those few trades or gaps in general? I'm just gonna keep talking here, but let me know if you have any. So what is it about makes gaps that make them so profitable? because you're getting a large quantity of volume of institutions, and by that I mean hedge funds, banks, big professional traders that have big, they're taking big size in stocks. They're either selling the size of the positions that they own, or they're buying big positions. You know, Amazon, I don't have this chart in here, but Amazon is a great example of something that, can, that has been just continually getting bought higher and higher and higher, Google too. Bab is another one, okay, where these stocks are getting bought and they're very expensive. I mean, Google and Amazon are over $900 a, a, a share price. I mean, they're so expensive. Who, who is gonna be buying these stocks? Big, big money, okay? So gaps are created with large institutional money. That's what makes the gap in the first place. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. And the most recent example of that really is the Whole Foods. In fact, I talked about this in the room today. It's very interesting. You can Google and read about it. But there is there was a hedge fund, okay, that has a nine percent stake in the in, in the in the in the stock in the company, and they were forcing the sale of the company because they wanted to get a certain profit within a certain period of time. So they forced the sale to you know, to Amazon, or I guess Amazon was the only one that was interested in it. But, you know, they're going to make a huge profit on it. But that one fund owned 9% of the company's stake, and they forced the sale. That's, that's how powerful uh, these funds are. They, they're, they control the market. That's another reason why you've got to go with them. You, you will lose forever and ever and ever if you don't get that concept. It's a concept that, I, that I'm lucky that I figured out very early on in my trading career, even though I didn't have my whole system and method when I, when I first started. But I saw and understood that concept very early on. It's because I, I focused on gaps, and that's why I stuck on gaps. And that's why I will only ever trade gaps. And that's why I don't need to trade any other strategy or method, because this is where it's at. This is how you make a lot of money, okay? And if you ever get to the point you want to make more, you know, then, you know, having more than two, three thousand dollar days, you just take more size, okay? Or you become an investor and you can be in these things overnight, all right? Or do options in them. So what I have figured out is a way to predict the way the directional bias to play the gap. And then I confirm it with a point rating system in the morning in the pre-market and that's what I do, okay? So I have a formula to rate and qualify the gap, and then I get the confirmation once it sets up into the open that it's good, that I can take it, and then I take the trade. And then I get the confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on my side, and then I take it, I put the stop in, and I play it. So first, I do the work in the morning before 9.30. Then the confirmation is when I get the setup into the open, between 9.30 and 10. I'm saying into the open, but it's really between 9.30 and 10. If somebody doesn't set up by 10, I'm off of it. I mean, chances are I'm not doing it. But the gap itself, I'm not predicting. I, I wait. 
I don't think there's anything reporting tonight. <clears throat> there probably are some gaps tonight, but I can't think of anything to bring up to show you. But there's a bunch of stuff out later this week. But the gaps are an event, and they create a sense of urgency in the stock. Whole Foods is a good example, okay? Thus, an action is being forced by participants of the stock. And this is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. Trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading on the side of power and money. And as one person, that's how you're going to make it. You will never beat these people. Doing reversals against this kind of money is very dangerous. Even if you end up making a really good money one day re doing a reversal of, of institutional money play, you will give it back 10 times over in the lifetime of your trading. Trust me when I say this. And, and it's just dumb luck when you make money like that. It is very dangerous to trade against it. Very, very dangerous. They are in control. In fact, they're so in control of companies that, that, like I said, with Whole Foods, they have big stakes in companies and they can even you know, force companies to do things like sell. I mean, it, you know, the world that we live in and trade in that we participate in this market is, is very, it, 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 it's crazy actually. So we, I live in my own little world here where I just trade my gaps and I really don't read about fundamentals, but you know, that, that sale of being forced by that fund is just the, the it, it just, just shows you what you're up against with a trader and why you must, you must be with those people in control. I've been calling the SPY and the Qs. I'm just gonna write this in the room. I haven't done a market update in a while, I should. I've been calling the, the SPY and the QQQs and the two ETFs I'd look at higher for years. I think I'm the only person that kept calling them higher and higher and higher when everyone was saying it was crazy because people think the market's extended. I continue to call it higher. I've been right. We're still higher. In fact, the SPY was a trade today and it ran up today again. But you know, how was I able to see that? Because I saw that institutions were buying the market and they weren't selling it. They weren't selling it. Every sell-off was temporary. Every sell-off was immediately bought. Every sell-off was reversed. So you have to be with those big players. And if you are, it's very easy to make money. And if you're against them, it's scary and you'll lose. So simple, don't do it. Don't, don't do it ever. I mean, I never do it. So how do you pick which gap to trade? Well, there's tons of gaps every day, hundreds and thousands. You need a system to find the best gap, and this is what I've created. So I've created my own system. It's a 26-point system. It's a professional bearish gap rating system where I'm looking and rating on a checklist each morning how to figure out the best stock to trade, like Foot Locker or Cisco. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. So the checklist tells me the stock's going to have a high probability of directional bias for the entire day if you want to play it all day, which I don't, but I'm telling you if you wanted to. You could do it as a swing trade or an option trade too. Big move on the day, which I usually play out in the morning. Early confirmation, which is between 9.30 and 10. That's when you get the big move, okay? All the ones I'm showing you here today. And then I'm also looking for precise entries with follow through and a good risk reward. I think that's important too. In other words, if you're risking a thousand bucks, you wanna try to flip that around 100% if you can and make a thousand on it or more. Some days you'll make less, okay? But you can still be profitable, but the goal is to at least flip it around. And you have to think about that when you're in the trade, because if you risk a thousand bucks and you're up a thousand bucks and it starts to pull back, and if that's your goal for the day, if you don't get out, you know, if you don't get out of it, then what? Anyways, the philosophy behind the system is to look to analyze a large time frame to make the trend decision on the directional bias for the gap. That's what I'm doing, okay, in the morning. And I'm looking for the institutional traders. I use the one minute chart, which we've been looking at in the trades, and we're gonna look at the rest of them here. Like I said, for the last 14 days, we're gonna go back. But that allows for the good risk to reward and the accuracy, and also to protect myself with the stops. Now, a lot of people ask me how many gaps per week. This is actually not a busy time, which is why it's hilarious about the high percentage win ratio I've had. In earnings season, which is coming up in like two weeks, you've got a lot of gaps. You know, there could be five a day. Not earnings season, three to five a week. Now, what do I mean by quality gap? 20 points or more for the scoring system. So it doesn't have to be 26. It goes on a scale. So I'm looking for 20 or more. If it's under 20, okay, then 
the, the, the rule is not to do it, okay? If you don't do it at all, you can find something else. All right, let's look at the next one here. So the next one was cores. Again, stock closed here, gap down. I think this was an earnings play. Yeah, it was. So 531, stock rallying, boom. You can be in it, short it, you get the drop. You could have held it a little bit longer if you wanted to. Again, look at the time period here, between 9.30 and 10, right in here. Price of the entry, 33.30, boom, you short it. 1,400 shares, this is a little bit bigger of a stop. Again, risk, 9.80, take it out. Profit on this one was 700 bucks. Some days will be big, some days will be small, some days will be medium. Again, no piggies. Any questions? Then EXPR was another one here, June 1st. This was a loser. This was a weird open in here. It actually, I think, opened late, going back and looking at it. And it failed. Okay, so this was a stop. So the trade set up, I shorted it, took a stop on it, lost, okay? Lost 900 bucks on this, lost what I risk, had to be out. Now, when this happens, you can watch it for later. This was a bust though. It never set up again later in the day. Just moved off of it, okay? It's also as important why you put a stop. You have to put a stop because <clears throat> this thing could have rallied all the way up to, you know, nine bucks or $10. I mean, you never know. So it was an absolute, loser okay then there was another good one though luckily on this day so i did not get the morning one in this because i was involved with the expr but if you did them both actually into the morning this hpe this was the same day june 1st i mean this was a huge one so this closed up here the night before gap down dropped you could have done this one made money expr lose I did that one lost, then flipped to this one, did it, got the drop. So I did end up doing two in this day, simply because of the fact that this worked in the morning quickly. I saw it, it rated good, it was on my list. And some days I will do two. Not always, but occasionally. Anyways, this wasn't some huge, crazy, crazy move either. 50 cents in here. But again, good size, good risk, good profit. Cover the loss then in the XPR, up money for the day, okay? Nice trade in here, HPE, 2,500. If you wanted to stop though and just took the loss in the XPR, that's okay. You can take the one loss and be done. But it's the checklist that always tells me what to do. Some days I rate five, six things, and in an ideal world, I only do one thing a day and it has a huge move right away. It's like that Foot Locker, for example. But you never know, okay? You never know, and you're watching it, and you don't know how big the move's gonna be. I do review targets in the class, but things can go to what I call the dream target, and you just have to kind of watch it and play it out. But you also have to have your own money management goals. And like I said, <clears throat> you know, if, you're, if your goal is even to make 500 bucks a day, and you're up it, and it starts to back up, and it's 10.05, you know, you probably should get out. So anyways, the checklist is what helps keep me focused. This is what I teach in my class. This is the meat and potatoes of what I do, okay? It, it allows me to make the correct decisions. And then I'm not all over the place. I'm not second guessing myself, okay? And whether it works or fails, it works more than it fails, so then I don't get stressed out about it. And that is, like I said, with the XPR, I have a stop. So if I take the stop, I take the stop. The checklist is my plan of action, though, that I'm following. I believe in it. I have conviction in it. I follow it. That's what I do. Then I don't have to overthink it once the day starts. The thinking is in the morning before the market opens. So then the pressure's off me. Once the market opens, I'm just waiting for the stock to set up. It either sets up or it doesn't. It either works or it fails. And I put the stop in as my protection. It's like the insurance, okay? Everyone that puts money in the market or trade should have a plan of action and a checklist. You should know where you're getting out. You should know your goal for the day. You should know your risk, okay? And, you know, most people that are professional traders, this is how they think and trade. So 
getting back to what I was saying, my system, what I do, the 26 points, why do they work? Because they're looking at price action. So I look at the daily chart. I'm reading the daily chart and I'm predicting based on the gap in the daily chart, analyzing, I use technical analysis, that institutions are either buying it or selling the stock or shorting it, okay? That's the whole philosophy with what I do. I'm a chartist, <clears throat> you know, I, I read price. And the reason for gaps I don't concern myself with, although I thought the Whole Foods was interesting, but I'm really, really, really focused on just the gap itself and what it's doing. When you, when you trade, you've got to get the direction right. If you would have shorted Whole Foods, for example, on Friday, you would have lost big time. Uh, you know, and if you would have gone long something like the HPE, you would have lost big time. That ended up having a massive move all day long. In fact, that one kept going, I think. So this is what's going to help direct you to find the momentum is the points. You, you don't really make money as a trader if you're only trading and making like three cents or two cents or five cents. I know sometimes people want to scalp, and there are traders out there that scalp, or they make money, you know, in ECNs by putting orders out ahead and just the, the make money on that. I don't trade like that. I just take it out and pay the fee to get out, for the commission fee to get out, and I'm done. You're, the idea is for you to get the momentum. Ideally a dollar or more, but you may not get that every time. And some of these, you know, some of these stocks, you know, 20, 30 cents, 50 cents is good enough. You don't need a buck. You can make decent money with 50, 60, 70 cents, okay? Now the next one here, June 2nd, here we are. Yeah, it was June 2nd here. Restoration hardware, stock closed up here, gap down. Open, rallying, boom, short it, get the drop. Whether you get out here, whether you get out here, whether you hold it all the way down to here, you see here, again, 9.30 and 10. 9.30 and 10, 9.30 and 10. That's the time of the day. But again, you have to know that, that it's you should be watching Restoration Hardware, that this is the one, and you gotta know it's a short, okay? And you gotta know where the setup is, and where to put the stop. So entering this one was 43.50, 75 cents risk, 900 bucks, exit, boom, boom. This was a nice dollar move in here went more even $1,260 so your goal every day is to flip it at the very least but this did keep going in here actually came all the way down broke 42 this is very very small but hopefully you can see this over here to the right so this was June 2nd I should have put the dates up here then there was the weekend and no trades of the Monday okay again some days you won't have any that meets your criteria then the following week, June 6th, was a huge, huge mover. This continued down for days. You could have done a swing trade in this. You could have done an option trade in this. This fell off a planet. I did not do this. I actually, I called this one in the room. I didn't put this, uh, put this in here, but I did call this in the room. I just thought the stop was too big. As it turns out, you still could have made money doing this one here. I did a late one in here. So I made money doing this really quickly late one in here. Short, 33.95, dropped. Wanted it to go all the way to 33 right away. So didn't do it. I got out quick because I knew it was in the late trade. Made 900 bucks. I felt that this was going to set up again. So I watched it and watched it. And it was because of the gap rating and the movement that it had. And I really felt like 33 was a realistic number for this to go to on the day. So I ended up doing a second trade in this, which you can do. This, and I do teach this in the class as well. Here's the morning. Here's this. Boom. Shorted in here. Second trade in the HDDS. Stop. Got the move. Here, it finally did go to 33. Broke it. Went to 32 something. Okay. I, I felt that this would go to 33. I just felt very certain about that. The way the stock acted and traded. And looking at the chart. So, this was a good one. $1.50 plus. Okay, price of the short thirty four fifty five, exit it broke. I mean this could have, this ended up going to some crazy number over the course of the following week, but for the day then broke thirty three bounced. This is a really good trade in here, 
3300 bucks plus the morning money was over four grand. And again, why? Institutional sell-off, shorting, everything coming in. Night before the stock closed where? Take it over, 4140 something, boom. Gap down, I forget if this was at night or in the morning. I don't remember when this did it. I don't know if it was after four or the pre-market, but anyways, open here around 37. So it got down, fell like a brick, okay? This is what you're trying to capture on the day. This is what you're trying to capture on the day. And that's what I do. Any questions? Am I talking too fast here? I feel like I might be. <laughs> Anyways, DLTH was the next one here on June 7th. Closed here, gap down, boom, dropped, short it, get the stop, boom. This one here, I did and just got right out. Kept going. This I didn't even do this whole thing at all, okay? Just got the one quick move in here. Kept going. Again, going for the day. 2,000 shares, get the drop, bounce, first target, out. Could have made more in this trade. Went farther. Broke 17. Got down to 16 something. Again, you know, it doesn't matter. What does matter is knowing to do this, getting the entry, <laughs> getting the trade, getting out with profit. So no piggy targets in this. Still a nice move. Urban, closed here, gap down. Again, boom, short it, get the drop, out. That's it. Or if you hung through it, you could have got out of it later. Had expectations for this to keep going. Didn't do it, but it did have a move down in here, came back down to the same area. I think this was just exhausted and tired. Price of the entry here, 1669, boom. Wherever you get out quick in the morning, if you wait a little bit to give it a chance, nice move in here. 3,000 shares, again, close to 1,000 bucks, 930. You gotta play these things out. Does everyone see this? Is everyone kind of understanding the concept here? And these, you know, this is all of these trades are, you know, the quantity of the share size. You don't have to take three or 4,000 shares, but that's really, that's not something crazy. It's certainly doable. Certainly, certainly doable. But if you want to divide them in half, these are still good trades. This is how you put together, you know, a, a month, people. This is how you put together a year. Consistently being profitable is not having one trade where you make five, six, seven thousand dollars and then losing four days after that, giving it all back and then being down. Or, or, or getting out break even so many trades. Or scalping. In and out, in and out, in and out. Okay. This is a very thoughtful thing that I'm doing. Knowing the stock I want to watch, knowing the direction, knowing the entry, knowing the exit, knowing my goal. Okay. It's about chunking it out if you want to make money doing this. It's just the mentality and how to see it in your mind and your brain that many, many people just don't get. Anyways, this pay was weird. This was then on the 9th. This, I think, was a late open here. Did a late trade in this, ended up getting stopped. Took a loss on the pay. If I had done that first one, I would have made money, but it was weird. It was, it, 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 just, it just opened late and it looked weird. So I didn't do that one right away. So I did a little bit later one and then I got stopped. So then I watched it and I did a later one in this and ended up making money on the day in this. 15 minutes set up here, got the drop. Here it is, quick move, boom, out. So I ended up profitable in the day in this one, nothing huge, but came back from the loss. So the first pay play was the loser, second one, winner. Same stock, okay? That was just a weird one there with the open. Next one in here was cake. Okay, June 13th, closed here, gap down, boom, set up. See the sell off in here? Shorted it, waited, waited, waited. Okay, wherever you got out in here, you could get out in here, you could have got out in here, you could have got out in here. 
okay? All of these moves in here are you want to be short, okay? The stop is not a long. You've got to be in it in the right direction. Price of the entry, 52.80. This was a big stop, but it held, so that was good. Risk, 1,300. Exit, 52.40. Profit, 400 bucks. Can't complain. Didn't end up having a huge move in the day. Tried to give it a chance. Still $400. Again, this is how you put together a week and a month. All right? HRB, this was a long. I just want to clarify that. The stock closed here, gapped up, dropped, boom. You could have bought this for a quick move up. Okay, it went to the quick first target I gave everybody in the room. It ended up going to a bigger number. But if you want to do the quick fast play, you take it, get out. You could have held this a little bit longer. Again, time of the day here between 9.30 and 10. This was a bullish gap though, so you know. So you would have gone long this year at 29.10. You would have gotten out of this into the first target at 29.50. This did continue. I think it almost got to 30 on the day. This was a big stop, okay? Oh, I forgot the S there, it's shares. Anyways, if you took 2,000 shares of it and risked 1,600 bucks, you could have made $800. This is just this first move in here. You're getting out when it goes and spikes. This did come in hard. Stop is the same down here. Rallied up again. You could have actually gone long it a second time and got out. This was a good bullish gap. No good shorts on the day here in this. Any questions? I'm showing you all these trades. This is now we're into last week. Okay, we're catching up here. KR was last Thursday. This is a really nice trade. Open, rally, boom, short it, get the drop. Get out here, get out here. Look at the move. Stock close here the night before, gap down. How did I know? I rated the gap. I used my 26 points. I knew it was a good trade. I knew it was a short. I didn't look at anything else that day. In fact, I, I remember that I didn't even read anything else that day. I said, we're not even looking at anything else. People remember giving me ideas. I said, no, 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 no. I was so certain that this would work. Absolutely, 100% worked. Boom. Okay. Price of the entry, 2675. You're short it. You get the stop. Okay. Got out in the quick move. It did continue. I don't think this broke 26 immediately in the morning in that first 10 o'clock period. It went a little bit more. Total profit, 2,080 bucks. This continued though. You could have gone back into this later in the day. Again, I prefer the quick, quick trades and that's all that you need to make this kind of money, people. That's all that you need. That's all that I mostly do. It's once in a blue moon, I'll do a later one. But this continued. You could have done it again and again and again. It's just the point that you don't need to do that. And either way, you're following the institutional money, which sold this stock big and hard. And this was before, actually, that's interesting. This was before the WFM announcement. Isn't that interesting? Because this was Thursday. Oh, I don't know why I have this in here. I, for, I, I put a wrong date. Sorry about that. <laughs> that was supposed to go up on a different date. We didn't do trades on the 12th. <laughs> Sorry. I'm skipping around here. There were two days no trades what was the 12th here let me just go back it was before i think that was monday yeah hrb was wednesday cake was tuesday yeah it was monday sorry about that i just had those slides out of order mondays are the slowest days i didn't have to do anything today we'll go over it but i did go long the spy today Anyways, in here is the target. I'm gonna try to hurry up here. We got two more. Target was Friday. It was a short. Again, I've been talking about the WFM. You could have gone long WFM, or you could have shorted target. Cost also worked huge as well. Stock close to your gap down, boom, short it. Get the drop into the first target. This did keep going, went all the way down, broke 49, went almost to 48, but the first target was $50. So if you did it and got out of the first target, you could have made 1200 bucks. It kept going though. This actually went and broke 50 right here. A big move, unexpected news related event. If you held it down, 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 you could have bar by barred it, it broke another buck. Again, it's not the idea of getting out the low of the day in a short and it's not the idea of getting out the high of the day in a long. It's the idea of knowing which stock to watch 
knowing where to get the entry, taking it with size, getting the stop in, paying attention, watching how it trades, watching the price action, and getting out with the profit. Okay? And if your goal is in for the day, what do you do? The, the normal thing to do is what? Get out. This was today's play. It was a long, if you can even believe it. I watched and looked at it, got out of this quick. Got out of this quick, didn't know where this would pull back to before it took off. I ended up taking off like a rocket. I, know, I didn't see where the market closed today, but had the move. I said 245 was the target for the SPY today. It didn't get there right away in the morning, the first half hour, but wasn't expecting much today. No good shorts. Stock came in, bought it, boom, got out. If you held it a little bit longer, held a little bit longer, held it at 10 o'clock, you could have made more. Again, nice move in here. So risk in this one, 75 cents, which actually is a really good risk for this, for, to, to play this buy. Uh, if you took 1,200 shares, $900, just got out me a little bit of money. Actually, it would have made more if I'd held it, but I just didn't want to be in anything a long time today. So everybody with me. How much money would you have made in the room in the last 14 days risking $1,000 in every call that I made? There was only a few longs, most were shorts. Closed around the Memorial Day holiday, two days no trades, two losers, okay? Most of the days one symbol. Cisco, Foot Locker was off this week, Coors, EXPR was a loser, HPA was a good winner. RH, no trades in the fifth. HDS, there were two, this was a really good day. This one again, kept going. Quick exit, Urban. That was good. Here's the pay. One loser, one winner. 612 was no trades. Cake was a small one. HRB, KR, and then Target Friday. And today I did this buy. So the win ratio is 88%. There's only was two losers in the last 18, no, 14 days. I don't know why I said 18 days. It's 14 days. Not including, well, not including the, not, I didn't include the holidays, the days I had the room closed. Does anyone have any questions? So you could have made over 18 grand in the last 14 days of trading, of the trades. Some days were off. But do you see why it's not necessary to do any more than one strategy? It's not necessary to do any more than one trade a day unless you want to, like I did with the day where the XPR didn't work and I did the second one. But I could have lost twice. It might not have worked. I still would have been profitable, okay? The idea is having more winners than losers. The idea is having a high win ratio. When you have a high percentage win ratio, it doesn't, it, it, you know, then, then you can risk $1,000. You understand? Then you don't have the, the, the days where you're down. You don't have the drawdowns. If, if you were risking $1,000 in every trade and you were 60-40, you'd still be profitable. It'd be painful, though. I mean, I mean, theoretically, theoretically, okay, if you get out with one unit and flip it around in every profitable trade and you have a 51% profitable system and 49% losers, theoretically, okay, you would still be profitable if you flipped every trade around. But I didn't flip every trade around 100%. Some I flipped more. Some I, I only got half or a little bit less, okay? I had to watch the targets, I read the chart, I know what those numbers are, I know the areas, I'm watching the time of the day, I'm watching the market. But either way, it doesn't really matter because my system is so profitable with the high number of wins. So whether you hold to a piggy target, which I'm not telling you to do, or whether you get out of the first whole trade into the drop, okay, if you're shorting, I'm saying for example, the idea of risking a good amount of money per trade, you can, you can feel, less stressed about it when you know and trust yourself not to get crazy trading all day to four o'clock or taking a million trades. You have to be focused. You have to believe in the system. You have to have conviction. You have to know that you will only do one or two. You have to be disciplined. Okay. So I'll quickly talk here about trading with size just a little, little bit. It's you can take a beginner risk, which would be 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 150. This is an advanced risk with $1,000. I think anything over 500 is, is, is advanced. 
if you start out, I say learn the system, get it down, because the trade's set up in the one minute chart and you gotta learn how to do it, okay? Then you can work it up. So start as a beginner level first and work it up. One of the things I think is very important that you gotta understand about how your mind works with money and, you're, and, and when you're doing it and you're taking the trades fast is everything kind of has to go in a flow. It's, it's almost like you're not, it's, it's like you're not even processing the thought. That's why I do the pre-work. My brain is processing intellectually and reviewing all the things on the chart before 9.30. So I'm doing all of that, all of that, okay, beforehand. All the thinking is happening before. Then I'm living in live time and reacting, and I do call the exact entries and stops in the trading room. If you're in the trading room with me, I'll say 10 by 50, 20 by 60. The first number is the entry, the second number is the stop. My, my brain is, I'm just doing it instinctually because I've been doing it now for over eight years and I'm so good at trading the one minute chart and seeing things right away is my brain is in sync with these charts and what I, the numbers that I want to seem to set up. If you're doing 50 different strategies at once in a certain time frame, going long, going short, looking at too many stocks, it's very confusing. Your brain will never get that. You will never get that sixth sense. You will never gain that edge. And, and, and it is something that, not everybody will get, but I'm telling you, you will never get it if you're not on top of one thing within a certain period of time that you know what you're looking at and you do every day, like riding a bike or playing the piano, okay? Your brain gets in habit. It's just kind of like your sleep patterns. You know, you, you, if, you, if you get in a sleep like, I kind of was out of a schedule where I wasn't getting up really in the morning in the winter. Now I'm, I, I, it's been really hard to get up. Now that now it's light early, 5 a.m., light, I put the wind shades up so the light comes right up. It's helped me to get up. When you get out of sync with something in your brain, in your body, then it's hard to get back into it. But when you're in sync, you just do it. It's just natural. And that's how I am now with my trading. I've been doing this for eight years. I've done nothing else. But you've got to train yourself to get in the habit of doing the things, getting in, getting out, getting in, getting out, taking the trades, looking at the charts, looking for the setups, looking at the shorts, not even doing the processing of the thinking part in the morning before when you're relaxed. When you sit down, you have a cup of coffee and it's eight o'clock and it's 8.30 and you're looking at the gaps and you're asking questions of the room, no stress. In the live day, boom, you just do it. And you don't overthink it because if the trade doesn't set up, then it just doesn't do it. And in fact, what was the one today? Oh, S. Jen, here, here was the one this morning I didn't go back on how it looked to close, but I said, ah, off of it. Boom, it's a bust. We never did it. I didn't short it. Nobody lost in it. Or if they did, they didn't tell me they shouldn't have done it. I said, this is off. It never set up. I rated it. I looked at it. It was a down gap. It was a bust. Okay? Nothing to do in it. Couldn't do it. We're running out of time here. I'll just talk for a few more minutes. But the bottom line is that if you want to do this for a job or a career and work for yourself, you don't have to devote 40 hours a week to doing it. There's a process where you'd have to learn. There's a, there's a commitment. There's a financial commitment to open a trading account, a financial commitment to taking my class. But all of these are things that are, are available to you. The fact that I'm even teaching my assistant, I'm not just training alone, you know, living in my apartment means that you have an opportunity to learn from me and I've created something special. People are making money with me. You know, there's all kinds of different levels in the room. Some are new, some are never traded, some risk a hundred bucks, some risk more than me. You know, you know, it's all different levels, men, women, all different age groups. So my class is called the Golden Gap Course. It teaches a strategy on how to trade gaps. That's what you would learn in the classes this weekend, June 24th and June 25th. And it's really the focus on the checklist. Here, I'm going to skip ahead here because we're running out of time. Anyways, trading is a, it's a great career. It's a great career, and particularly in the summer. Why? Because the weather's beautiful. You don't want to be inside all day. You don't want to have to wait till you know, noon to take a trade. You, know, you don't have to work in an office. I mean, it's a nice career. But you got to learn what to do. And you really do have to be focused. So I think a lot of people go round and round and round in their minds, and they, and they start to feel really gloomy about the market. <laughs> that period for me didn't last very long. I saw very quickly that I could make money trading. I just didn't know how to do it. But I, I never really gave up on the market itself. And when you see something like that Whole Foods, okay, it, that, that really is amazing to me. That gives me so much conviction in my own strategy when I see something like that take place. 
I have conviction in my trading strategy. If you're doing something now you don't have conviction and you have to ask yourself, why are you doing it? Why are you even risking a dollar, let alone a thousand dollars or whatever you're risking? But you know, I'm teaching people a skill, they're learning how to trade, they're making money. I call the trades in the room. I make it very easy for people after the class if you wanna join the trading room. This all was the KR. Everybody had a good day that day. Some people went back and do it later. That was some of the traders' com comments. Anyways, if you want to learn from me, the trading room is a good support system after the class to help you earn the money back for the class. But the goal really should not be that. The goal should be that you learn the skill you can use for the rest of your life. As long as the U.S. market has a close and open time, which is 4 o'clock and an open at 9.30, there will always be gaps in the market. And if you live in other countries and want to use a system for other countries, as long as they're closed and open, there will be stocks that gap. One of the nice things about the U.S. market, though, is that, you know, people either love or hate companies with a lot of emotions with the U.S. stocks. And so that makes it more powerful for them to play because a lot of times that's what creates a sell-off or the buying. When high emotions come into them and people make decisions and you can use that to make money if you know what to do, okay? So my class is a complete system to use how to train. It's a full two-day course from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time. The class is online. It can be anywhere in the world. It's Saturday and Sunday, June 24th and 25th. This is the class before the next earning season, which starts in July, third quarter in the summer. Uh, cost of the class is $49.99. If you want to sign up, you have to email me for sign-up information. It's melissa at thestockswish.com. I also teach a class called the Trends Course, which is on long-term trends, June 27th and 28th. This is 12 to 4. It says $9.99. This is if you want to do swing trades, not day trades. And if you want to sign up for both, you can do both for a combo special price of $54.99 and save $500. So like I said, summer is here and it's a good time to trade and third quarter should be good. What's really, the irony is that it's just been such a good period here, even though it's not earnings season, but I really think it comes down to my level of focus. I've just never been more focused on my trading than I have been in 2017. Part of it is there's a lot of people in the room now. I feel very responsible for people when they come and take the class with me. I want them to do well. I want to do well too. I have a lot of big projects on the plate for my business. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm just, I'm really, really, really focused. And it has come across. It's come across in my trading, you know, and that's why some of the days, if nothing meets the criteria, I just don't trade. Oh, we went over a little bit here. Any questions? I see some familiar faces out there. This was a good webinar. It was taped. You can go back and watch it and review the trades. If you want a trial for the trading room this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, if you want to check out the room before the class, email me at melissa at thestockswish.com to check it out. If you have um, questions, you can call me. 929-3200-0427. Uh, 3200 gap. No, Kathy, I'm done. Thank you for letting me stay a few minutes. Does anyone have any questions? Quiet group tonight here. I hope you got everything I said. If you didn't, don't be afraid to call me. I just don't know what people know and what they don't know. I honestly don't. I... I, you got to ask me questions if you don't understand stuff. But the benefit, you know, of, of doing the class is that you get to be in the room with me and you can learn more. Nobody's in the room that hasn't done the class. It's a prerequisite. I think you really have to take it seriously if you want to trade. And I don't mind spending time with people if they're serious about it. Okay. Good job, everyone. Thank you, Online Trader Central. Email me if you want a trial. Email me if you want to sign up for the class. And we'll see what we get the rest of the week. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Kathy and Karen. Forgot about Karen. Hi, everyone. We want to want thank you. Coming to Online Trader Central tonight. Kind thanks goes to Melissa, who was here with us. Melissa Armo, www.thestockswoosh.com. You can email her at melissa at thestockswoosh.com and check out that number she's got, 929-320-O-GAP. All right. If uh, you had more questions about the class, you have questions about uh, getting on the trial of the live trade room, email her request for that 
and she will get back to you with instructions on how to connect. Everyone have a great night ahead. Make good day trading tomorrow.